Now let's go back to Arizona and listen to Don Howard, who, by the way, was recently named Arizona's Fire Chief of the Year. Let's listen to him talk about the concerns that he mentioned at his operational briefing and how it all turned out. We're starting to get RH building. We had concerns of the fire moving up into Fry Canyon and then impacting this facility that's behind us significantly. So we felt we had to be aggressive in our approach. Um, with that then, we started that firing operation that next day. After that planning session the night before, things were set in motion. Uh, we were just trying to pick the opportune time when we got the correct winds and we started firing in Division Kilo. At our operational briefing, before we got started, we brought everybody together and, and indicated some of the concerns that we had as well as identifying what specific assignments we wanted folks to deal with. We're in very, very tight quarters here. It's 8.6 acres. We have one way in, one way out. There's really not a lot of room to move. Some of the traffic concerns with the, the larger apparatus on these very narrow roads was a real concern. Uh, any kind of change in the weather, if we had any type of wind shift, we felt it could significantly impact this area that's uh, behind um, the LBT, what we call the Large Binocular Telescope that's here. Um, our water supply um, was a concern. We wanted to make sure that we had a backup pump uh, in case we lost uh, our two Mark III's that we had in place. We actually had a third pump and that was an engine to ensure that we had a, a supply out to the hand lines that uh, we needed along that roadway. Um, if we were to have a wind change and it was going to cut off our egress, then we had identified safety zones inside this large facility that's behind us. They have an area that's all blocked. Uh, we were going to bring people into to that safety zone. The burnout operation was pulled down this 507 road and the firing group and the holding group that was along there were primarily a type 1 hand crews. And as we all know, at least in my mind, the weight of most fires falls right on those crews' shoulders and they do an unbelievable job. We were supporting their efforts. We had plumbed a hose line to protect the green side of that firing operation. We had laterals running every, hundred, every 200 feet, 200 feet back in towards uh, the observatory. Um, and we wrapped this entire facility with fire. Okay, we want to send it back to the observatory. Yeah, that's firm. Let's head them up. And I understand you guys got all your vehicle shuttle and squared away. Hey, firm, down at uh, hospital. Okay, cool. Hey, Joe, that corner there, that top over looks pretty good. We got some night vision on us tonight. Nothing on the exterior, but it's looking pretty good, but it'll need to be uh, checked tomorrow. Copy that. Uh, good job today. Yeah, it looks like everything went well for everybody. Well, I hope that jogged your memory and got you thinking about fire again. To help us further, let's run through a short recap of last year's fire season. With the exception of Alaska, the 2004 fire season was considered relatively mild. For Alaska, however, this was a record-breaking season, and we'll talk more about that in a later module. According to the National Interagency Coordination Center, just over 63,000 fires were reported, which is well below our nine-year average of 75,000. These fires, however, burned over 8.1 million acres, which is almost double the nine-year average of 4.3. You have to note, however, that Alaska alone burned a record-breaking 6.6 .6 million of these acres. In regards to the human cost of these fires, we suffered the unfortunate loss of 17 firefighters in 2004. Of these 17 fatalities, eight resulted from heart attacks, five of which claimed the lives of volunteer firefighters. Three fatalities resulted from driving accidents and three more during aviation operations. We also lost one firefighter in a pedestrian accident, one to a falling snag, and one more in a burnover in California. Reflecting on these statistics, I'm reminded of 1993. That was also a slow fire season with the exception of California. When the 94 fire season started, there were firefighters dispatched to the South Canyon fire that had not been on a fire since 1992. This last season, 
was probably the busiest season ever for some of you. But for others, the chance to exercise your firefighting skill may have been minimal. Now, regardless of what we're about to encounter this year, let's do our best to fully prepare and keep ourselves safe and productive.